Now, God is eternal. It may seem really obvious to say it, but it's important to grasp it and to know that we come from that eternal origin. He has always been, he is, and he will always be, Revelation 1.8. He is light, 1 John 1.5. He is love, 1 John 4.16. He is spirit, John 4.24. He is a consuming fire, Hebrews 12.29. These Bible verses, if we meditate on them as truth, and others like them, they will open up doorways that will enable us to engage with who God is and begin to discover who we are in that truth. But meditation is something we have to learn to do and practice to focus on these truths, which will open up the revelation as we give our time to rest in them. If we engage him and we begin to know him, that intimate relationship of beholding him face to face will help us know who we are and our identity will be reflected back to us as we look at him. We will behold him and behold us who were had our origin in him. So I began presenting myself as a living sacrifice in the heavenly tabernacle. And eventually, as I went through the tabernacle, now this is the tabernacle which is described in, in Hebrews. This is not the earthly tabernacle, which was patterned after the heavenly. This was the heavenly, which was designed to be a place where we could engage with God's presence and to experience that presence. And there are figuratively things that show us that as we progress and mature through our relationship with God, then we come into a deeper understanding of God and the mysteries. So I began to do this as I had dance floor experiences. I was led to engage as a living sacrifice. So in other words, I surrendered. And I chose to present myself to my high priest, if you like, Jesus, the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, who would prepare me as that living sacrifice. I didn't have to die. Well, I was already dead, but I had to recognize my uh, that I had died with him and that I no longer live in my own old identity, but I am now living and he lives in me. So I discovered that as I went into intimacy, I also began to engage in the heavenly realms. So there... In the Holy of Holies is the Ark of God's presence. The mysteries of the Ark beginning to unveil the governmental aspects of my identity and my destiny. So that's what I started to do. And they were absolute mysteries that I could not see everything that was there in the beginning. I engaged the Ark of God's presence, initially focusing on what was in the Ark. Now, figuratively, the things that were in the Ark the tablets of stone, the manna, and the rod that budded, they have symbolic meaning that for me, I was drawn to because I wanted to know what my daily mandate was. So I wanted God's guidance, what was written for me that I could embrace, the manna, God's provision for me to outwork what was written for me, and the rod that budded, the authority that I have as a son to outwork what was written of me. And I was looking for a daily mandate and I engage God every day to so go there. What's my mandate for the day? What are we going to do today? What do you want me to do today? Now that became works orientated. So that's when God started to hug me in first love and not let me go until I knew relationship was much more important than doing things with God. Being with him was more important in doing things with him as a foundation in which I could do things with him. So this was my first experience of engaging in the Holy of Holies and arced with him. And it was like the picture of the Ark of the Covenant had the mercy seat with two cherubim with their wings over the mercy seat. And in the picture in the Old Testament that God's presence would appear once a year in the Holy of Holies, where the high priest would go and present 
uh, for them on the Day of Atonement to deal with the sin of the nation for a year. And the presence of God would appear. Now, when I engaged the ark, what it felt like was that one of the cherubim was missing. Now, people would have hypothesized, you know, what was that about? Um, now, for me, an understanding that the connection here is for me to arc with God. This enabled me to stand in the place where I formed a connection between those wings that I connected and therefore God's presence sparked. There was a living presence. There was an arc of energy, of life that I could engage with there. That's the figurative way I perceived it and looked at it. And there are people who might ask, well, well, who were the cherubs and whatever? Now, some would say Lucifer was a covering cherub. And his design to reflect God's glory into man so man could mature. And if he left his place, it left a vacancy for us to come in sonship and make that arc of connection with God. That's one way, perhaps, of looking at it. But I needed to find relationship to give a balance to my governmental perspective. So relationship and then responsibility. So God reveals his heart. He releases his resources to show us our position and our authority in sonship. So the mysteries of the dance floor opened up future experiences that were once unknown to me, but eventually became progressively unveiled truth. The gardens, the dance floor were not linear. They were concurrent experiences that led me deeper into intimacy and then into my governmental positions in sonship within the order of Melchizedek. Now, after God let me go from the hugs, I re-engaged with the ark and I began to see the four faces of God within the connection, within that arcing point that I could see. I never saw those before. I was focused only on what was in the ark and it was a mystery that now had become unveiled. So again, as I stood there, I began to see revolving faces now for me the face that stood out to me of the eagle the lion the ox and the man and those were the order i engaged with them over a period of probably a year or so first was the eagle always drawn for the eagle and i and i sensed that that my identity was connected to the eagle and then the lion so i progressively began to engage with each face and as i looked and i beheld i saw how it related and i began to resonate with it now actually what i should have done was engage with the man face first because that was my true identity as a priest within the order of melchizedek to which it would have opened up the others in a in a much more smooth way let's say so i these encounters began to reveal my identity as legislator, king, oracle, priest. Whereas if I had priest, king, oracle, legislator, I would have had the knowledge of my identity as a royal priesthood and as an oracle of God who spoke the word and truth of God to then legislate. I began trying to legislate without knowing my true identity as a king and an oracle and firstly a priest. So our first priority is priesthood intimacy with the heart of the father not outworking that heart of course we outwork it but from the place of intimacy and eventually i went from looking at the four faces of god and being drawn to them once i had connected with the priesthood and who i am as a priest as a man i was able to stand in the name of god Yod, He, Vav, He, within the four faces of God. So I stood with them revolving around me. I stood in his name. I stood in the power of attorney of carrying his name. And the frequency of Yod, He, Vav, He, literally I began to vibrate and it activated me. The name of God activated me because I am that I am within I am. And the I am of God was activated through Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. And I would sing the song and I would engage the frequency of it. And it began to activate me 
in my role as a priest. And I then began to see through the eyes of the man. So I observe my life and the world around me as a priest, connected to God's heart for it. And then as the lion, the king, seeing my role as authority and the heavenly role in priest and king, royal priesthood, is a heavenly function that then enables me on earth to be an oracle and a legislator following the path of the ox and the eagle. And all of this was a mystery that I danced with on the dance floor that was becoming unveiled. Now, this took quite a number of years to get me to that point. I mean, if, if God had said, you're a priest of the order of Melchizedek back in 2010, I would have been no idea what that meant. If he said, you're an, an oracle or a legislator, again, I would have not known from a heavenly perspective what that was. I wouldn't have known how to stand in the name of God and and have that activated energy of my sonship within that name. So as I began to stand in the name of God, within the four faces of God, as a priest, I found I was drawn back to access the eternal now and find my origin there. Now, if I'd started in priesthood, that would have happened probably a year or so bef before it did. And that perspective will have given me something that I didn't have for that year. But eventually, as I stood and God let me work this out. I mean, he didn't force me. He let me outwork it from where I was then in the illumination of who I was then to where I eventually entered into a higher level of illumination, truth, revelation. So I found that I could be within the perichoresis of God, the family, the dance of love and intimacy. And my identity began to be revealed as my eternal origin. Right then, all the way up to that point, I did not know my origin, that I existed before I came into this world. That was what began to be revealed and unveiled. And there was a lot of deconstruction and taking away the pillars in my mind to enable me to embrace that, that went alongside this. But actually, that was when I first started to discover first love and the origin of my creation within God. OK, so as we saw at the beginning of this series, to experience first love, we need to abandon our soul to the trust of God who loves us unconditionally. Now, this is a process and you may only be able to do this to the level to which you know God in intimacy at this moment. But that's all that God expects. God does not expect you to be go to beyond what you're capable of doing and engaging. And he will meet you where you are, but he won't leave you where you are. He will lead you forward so you can go deeper and you can abandon more and more until you get to the point where you're totally trusting in him. For me, I had to go to the dark cloud experience to experience that. And eventually we'll get to that in this series. But I was choosing to surrender as a living sacrifice every day and say, God, do what you need to do in my life to prepare me to be who I am. So we need to get out of the boat figuratively, that boat of survival, that boat where we're protecting ourselves and sink into the vast ocean of God's unconditional love for us so we can experience it. And God wants us to enter into that place where we begin to trust him, where we're not in control any longer. So get relaxed, get comfortable. Begin to focus on your breathing. Breathe in very, very slowly. Hold that breath and then begin to let that breath out. Breathe in. Hold that breath and breathe out. And breathe in. And breathe out. And as you're breathing in, you're breathing in the unconditional love of the Father. You're breathing in unconditional love. That unconditional love is filling you. That unconditional love 
is touching every fiber of your being. It's flowing through you. Be still and let God love on you in that place. Stay there for a few moments. You're in a safe place, cocooned in God's arms, in God's love. From that place of safety, you can make the choice to surrender to whatever level you can by choosing to get out of the boat, abandon yourself, surrender to God's love and sink into that vast ocean of unconditional love. You can make that choice. Picture yourself in a boat floating on a vast ocean and step out of the boat and sink into that love. And as you're under the water, you can breathe. You're breathing in love. You're sinking deeper and deeper into love. Experiencing restored first love. Deeper and deeper into love choosing to let go of anything that comes to your mind, any thoughts that come into your mind, any negative thoughts, any wrong thoughts about yourself, any limitations that may come up, any objections that may come into your mind, let them go. Surrender them and go deeper and deeper into the trust of God's protection, God's blessing, God's provision around your life. Receive that blessing.
you're in a safe place of peace and rest. God wants to meet you as Father in that place and unveil something deeper of who you are, of who he is. So begin to fix your thoughts on seeing the Father face to face. Think about it. Set the desire of your heart upon it. Think of the Father embracing you, hugging you. Let those thoughts fill your imagination to create an image, a doorway. Picture that door in your spirit and choose to open the door and your choice is an invitation to the Father to come, to hug you, to again to breathe his breath of life into you so you can receive the living words of his breath. Breathe it in. Hear his words, I love you. I love you, my son, my daughter. I love you. Be open to hear some of the vast sum of his thoughts. Let them restore you to his original desire for you. Maybe you'll resonate with them in your spirit. Don't try and figure it out. Be open for an infusion of his thoughts about you, of who you really are. Now let the Father take you by the hand and lead you. Maybe he'll lead you to the garden of your heart. Maybe he'll lead you to the dance floor, entwine with you heart to heart and dance with you into the light and into the mysteries. And as he dances with you, allow your spirit to draw from him. Let your spirit resonate with that truth. Let even the mysteries be deposited within you. the truth of your identity, the mysteries of your destiny. Go wherever God takes you. Maybe you can dance with the lover of your soul. Let him romance you. Let him sing the song of your life over you. Feel the rhythm Feel the frequency, feel the life as it activates your DNA, as it activates within you.
If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.